Hey guys, it is Jacob here. In this video I'd like to show you my barely time mark 8 character. So fully capable of clearing time mark 7. And I will even show you some budget options or budget items that you can start clearing time mark 7 with. And I will try to tell you how I progressed to this state. So the character deals around 1 billion DPS right now or is hitting around 1 million DPS 1 billion DPS as you can see here okay let's say somewhere around 1 bill so just under and what are the items? So, from the last video, I've f the first item that I was aiming for, and I would abuse this in every AoE build and every early clear build. If you can afford it early on, hunting the Eye of the Kraken, that will help you a lot with clear. For this specific build, it is not needed that much in the lower tier maps because it has so insane AoE clear that you don't even need the explode. But I still aimed for it and it was my first upgrade. Early on it costs around 50 FEs, 40, 30. Nowadays you can get it for around 15. So that would be the first upgrade. <coughs> Together with that, I was my my go-to AOE combo Sky Devourer for area damage and skill radius paired with Pelmis Embrace to scale the skill radius into damage so these two items for every AOE build and for the really budget option amulet you would go for um, I don't remember the name, so I have to find it. Um, where is it? This one. The really uber budget amulet would be this one, which scales your skill radius when you are killing enemies and scales your damage when you are not killing enemies so that's the cheapest amulet you can get and for a, for an upgrade from that would be vortex heart which scales your aoe damage a lot and that's that is going for around 40 now so that would be the amulet for the weapon Uber budget weapon, one FE. You would go for <coughs> um, you would go for Ral's ambition because it has fervor and it has projectile damage when you are having fervor for every point of fervor. So with this weapon I was fully capable of clearing time mark seven maps doing around five hundred million DPS. So this weapon, awesome starter, and once you get, let's say around 50 FEs, you can try to find some something like this, where I was looking for physical damage percentage, physical damage flat, some gear fist damage, yeah, so physical damage bow basically, <coughs> with above 400 DPS. This cost me. I think 30 FEs, so you can find some really cheap, even for 5 if you get lucky. But when you are swapping from the unique weapon, you are losing fervor, so you need to get the fervor somewhere, somewhere else, and that is your glove slot. And gloves with fervor are going for around 5 FEs, but you need resistances. You need to get resistances somewhere, so you need at least one tier 1 resistance roll, preferably erosion resistance. 
and those go for like 80 FEs. Yeah, so be prepared for that. If you just go for the fervor, they are cheap, but you have to craft them. And with resistances, they will cost you more. <coughs> for uh, boots, what to aim on boots? Movement speed, deflection stacks, and resistances. Again, if you can get erosion resistance, great. I'm not capped on that one, but I need the other resistances as well. So yeah, enchanting cold resistance. If I could en enchant erosion resistance on the boots, I would be capped on erosion. So yeah. <coughs> but movement speed, deflection and resistances on the rings. At first you want to cap your resistances, so triple resistance rings plus some damage. And on the second ring, I, I was crafting this one, I bought one with uh, double resistances and I crafted the rest and I ended up with this. Altogether this ring cost me around 150, including the crafting, but again it is triple resistances and physical damage and I got lucky and I got even physical damage as elemental on that so that would be the second ring so focus on resistances on the rare gear and there is the budget gear skill wise <coughs> I'm going for around ARR still multifaceted guards to be able to summon three ARRs at one time so they are free and uh, added physical hunting tempo which is a stacking buff wind projectiles if you want even more damage you can swap wind projectiles for slo uh, for slower projectiles that will give you a bit more damage but for mapping uh, the the mines from you will fly slower so it will take a bit longer to summon the Einariars, so that's why I'm using wind projectiles, just to summon them faster during map. And the last link would be, for me, Nova Shot, but you can easily go with critical strike damage and get pretty much the same result, so that link is up to you. I'm planning to, to get critical strike damage link on my candle later on, so I leveled up Nova Shot. But the damage is pretty much the same. This also gives you a little bit of additional projectile speed, so it helps you summon the NRRs faster. For the movement skill, there are two options, either Speed Phantom or Blink. <coughs> Blink le will let you traverse through the map faster because it has one second lower cooldown or faster cooldown. But the speed phantom brings you or gives you the possibility of mm, like getting monsters together through its vacuum effect because everything you hit uh, in the circle gets vacuumed to the middle and that helps the NRRs to deal AoE damage to them and that also helps your helmet to explode the monsters better. <clears throat> so, I'm using Speed Phantom, but if I go, if I want to go really fast, if I go lower maps, I would use Blink just to get faster through the map. Uh, the second movement skill and also Empower skill would be Bloody Steps. This provides you with movement speed when you pop it, you move faster. And it also provides you with critical strike rating, because if you pop it and then before it goes off you cast your NIRs, they get 40% critical strike rating. So what I do is I pop it, I blink twice and then before it goes off I summon my N NIRs and that's how I traverse the map. The NIR clear is insane, if I put them here I can go like here and they will still shoot monsters up here and the AoE would clear monsters even at the barrel here. So the clear of the build is insane but you have to cast the Einariars. 
from time to time or every other screen, let's say. <coughs> For the defensive skills, I'm using Frost Shield. I'm using two defensive skills. If you don't care about defense, you can put Frost Shield on the auto defense setup here instead of Reform and use um, Burst of Anger with Mania and the regular supports for Burst of Anger. That would give you more attack speed, just give you more damage. But I care about defense more than damage because the build has more than enough damage to clear anything. Really, but really struggles with defense at least at this point. So, first shield with rhythm and def defensive layers, extended duration and amplification to keep it up throughout the cooldown of the rhythm, and defensive layers to get the two second uh, recharge of energy shield because I have some energy shield, so that's my only source of recharging it during battle when I'm getting hit. Because once you get hit, you cannot regenerate your energy shield for 4 seconds. Then it starts regenerating until you get hit again. But defensive layers provide you with 2 seconds of unstoppable energy shield recharge. So that's why I'm using it here. <coughs> and since I'm still running life, I'm st I'm st I, have I still have not swapped to energy shield. I need to run some sort of heal. For mapping, life source is great because it can be pretty much always up. But for bosses you want something with cooldown. But for bosses I use compound potion. Because on bosses you have no source of uh, generating charges to be able to use the life source more than three times. And li I link it up with residues and emergency restoration residues for it to be up even after it heals me fully. If I get hit, it will still be up for its duration. Emergency restoration gives it more effectiveness, so you are on low mana pretty much always, so that's 20% effectiveness here. And when you use it when on low life, there's another 40% <coughs> here. <coughs> oh, here. So that's 60 something. Yeah, it gives gives it a lot of healing. And the last link would be armor infusion. If you struggle with damage, which you should not be struggling with damage, you can use Berserk for more critical strike rating. But it's, it is really not needed, so I use armor infusion to provide some additional mm, defense. Or you can use instant restoration to Instead of regenerating over time, it would heal you instantly. That would be another option here. And if you would like to go fully passive, you can even go uh, Resurrecting Warcry and pair it with uh, Rhythm. And that way you would it would get automatically cast every 6.2 seconds or whatever the cooldown of rhythm is and uh, the war cry provides you with uh, damage reduction not much but it's better than nothing and it also weakens monsters around you when it gets used and that provides you with even more damage reduction because it reduces the damage of the monsters by 10% <coughs> Now, for the auras, weapon amplification to increase physical damage and attack speed. Another option would be precise projectiles, but I find the weapon amplification to be better for now. Later on, I will be using both of the auras. Uh, acuteness imbue, because I'm focusing on physical damage and this scales the physical damage even further. So. Acuteness in energy fortress to get some source of energy shield because the build is really squishy and there's no other like defensive aura that you could use. So this gives you at least some more life pool. And the last here would be precise rejuvenation. You want to do it precise because you cannot level it. Like you can level it to level 2 or 3. 
I can level it to level two or three before I get before I go uh, too low on mana, so I leave it on level one. And the precise version gives you 10% life restoration speed, so that's why I'm using it here. And that provides me with a steady life region in combination with my talent points. For the curse setup, it would be vulnerability because majority of my damage is still physical. <clears throat> Later on, with all the gear upgrades, it will be full elemental, but for now it is physical. So, vulnerability curse here, swiftness aura for some more movement speed and seal conversion to reserve it on life, because I don't have enough mana uh, seal reduction to run it on mana. And for auto defense setup I run reform. I was trying delayed pain as well. You can even run uh, ages of fire for attack and spell block chance. Yeah, pick any other like defensive skill, but if you don't care about defense and you just want more damage, you can put in Euphoria on hit in combination with um, where is it? In combination with Fixate to give you more chance to deal double damage and to mark monsters and market monsters take 40% increased critical strike damage. So that would provide you with a lot more damage. When you hit boss with this, you get five stacks. So it provides you with like 30% double damage hit chance straight away. But I needed a defense here. So, like this for me. Okay, those are the skills. Um, for passive tree. Uh, God of Machines. The same as in the last video. Bottom part for, uh, for sentries. So sentry damage, some life and energy shield because I'm using both at this time. And yeah, sentry damage. Uh, the large passives would be sentry for max sentry quantity and uh, overly modified for sentry damage. Second tree would be machinist, again the bottom part of the tree. And we don't need this point once we get to hero relics and hero memories so i saved this point and put it elsewhere the large passes would be heat up sentry damage and co-resonance that scales your attack speed into sentry cast speed frequency that's really that, that's the only option that you can take here anything else <clears throat> and the last three I chose Marksman, so it is the same as my Erika build. And that's therefore 50% projectile speed bonus also applies to additional damage bonus. And the second trade would be close range fire for damage. But if you need more defense you can go deflection and get more deflection stacks. I'm getting deflection stacks from just running around because I have deflection mod on the boots. So I don't really need this because I'm always running. But yeah, you can use this as well for more defense. And in here, more damage, attack speed, some crit, here is some movement speed, here is ranged attack speed and chance for multi strike. This helps a lot with damage. And the last points would be Agility Blessing genera Generation <coughs> and more life. For Statue of God, for my pedigree I'm run running Fallen Leaves. Haven't looked into anything else. You can go for Barrier of Radiance for energy shield regeneration later on 
for now I'm going for fallen leaves and on the other slates I'm focusing on defensive so life and elemental resistances here is some focus blessing generation to give me a little bit more chance to deal double damage but all of them are pretty much just what I managed to drop here is some more life and here is some more life with elemental resistances yeah and for hero traits you go like this Bing is really strong throughout leveling because he scales so much through his traits only from his traits you get 40% additional damage here you get 200% um, additional damage here so that's 240 you get 60 here that's 300 and you get another 120 here so you get 420% additional damage just from its traits so you get you do five times the regular damage of another character that what that's what makes Bing so strong early on without gear I have a viewer pushing to level 92 with his gear that he dropped during the story so yeah Bing's damage is insane on rolling blast marble you want to get one with three engrams and one of the engrams has to be the third one here you really need the third one open and the stats on it would be mainly after using empower 12% additional projectile damage and the other stat you can choose whatever you are missing it might be critical strike rating attack speed like you can see on this one or some like additional damage when you are hitting a boss when when you put your mines beside a boss that that's a mod there as well for additional damage there like up to 18 percent i think and why we need a third engram open is for this unique <coughs> memory which lets you like throw three bombs instead of just one and that lets you like summon all three of the Ainariars all together without having to cast them multiple times so yeah this gives you the option and for the other two I chose <coughs> the main stat would be minus projectile quantity and additional projectile damage and the second mod for me is movement speed because I want to go faster but you can go for even more additional damage you can get this mod on on the memory as well so you can go for those or there are some other like m additional damage mods as well uh, where when throwing the bombs near the boss and such so yeah that's this go big or go home. and just for showcase I can run I can try to run <laughs> a tier 8 map problem with the build right now is its survivability like the damage is great but when you and when I en when I encounter the seasonal like champions the golden ones that that uh, like trap you in their arena they deal so much damage that I'm not able to survive but as you can see the damage is more than enough to clear time mark 8 map and that's also because of the explosion of the helmet which gives it a lot of additional damage or, or additional damage yeah th these bosses are insane there are even three other bosses like bosses re really bosses not just champions I need to kill them one by one see 
So for leveling this is not great, but for farming you can farm time mark 8 maps early on vi without without expensive gear. This one should die. Nice. You like my fireworks? <laughs> the pirate is dead as well. Give me a moment, light the fire. And that's time mark eight boss. I prepared the perfect demolition. Yeah. For time mark seven you just for for time mark seven you just zoom through and you don't care about anything. So yeah. Thank you guys for watching, the, ne the next update will be from Time Mark 8.4 map with finished gear, which the upgrades would be uh, bow and armor mainly, and you want, uh, two, you want two really like pricey items, which would be, which would be bow, bow of Endless Dusk with this mod corrupted for 200% physical damage as fire damage, that goes for around 2000 FEs. And for the armor piece, it would be Imperial Might, which goes for 6000, so yeah. I will be trying Cicada Shell. We'll see how, it, how that goes. If I find some for around 350 FAs, I, I might go for it today, we'll see. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next update. Bye.